When it comes to upgrading an audio system in a vehicle, a digital signal processor is a must. Nearly every stock audio system in existence now has a fixed tune built into the system that allows the cheap stock speakers to sound acceptable. But once we start replacing that stock gear with new items that change the sound, we need to be able to fine tune the performance of those new items. I often compare this to building a performance vehicle. We know that once we start modifying the powertrain of a vehicle, we need to tune the way that those different components interact with each other in order to achieve the best performance. And the same is true for vehicle audio. Even though there are many reasons to get a digital signal processor, there might be some reasons that getting a DSP is not the best choice for you. I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the channel where together we learn how to master car audio and design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's discuss. So really quick before we get into the content, a quick shout out to our show sponsor, New Concepts. When it comes to building an aftermarket system, you are of course going to need power, signal, and speaker wire, and power distribution parts. My go-to for the longest time, long before I ever started the channel, is New Concepts. They have high quality wire and wire accessories at very fair prices. Learn more at the links down in the video description, and a special thanks to them for making these videos possible. So to kick this off, let's first talk about the reasons that you should get a DSP and and later in the video, we'll talk about reasons that you maybe shouldn't. All right, reason number one that you should get a DSP is to correct the factory audio signal. We kind of already discussed this in the intro of the video. With a stock audio system, a lot of the manufacturers are programming a stock tune. You can't change that, but basically they're applying equalization, time alignment, sometimes they're using all pass filters. They're doing these different things and they're locking that tune and it's different for each channel and speaker within the vehicle. The reason they do this is they are able to make their stock inexpensive speakers sound better. But the reason that we might want to undo some of these factory signal changes are because we're upgrading the gear. We're switching to different gear that's going to have a different sound profile, if you will, so we're going to need to modify with an aftermarket DSP. A quick side note here, sometimes people will get confused and they think that they need to just correct the electrical signal back to a certain target response, but that's really only part of the process. What you really need to be doing is modifying the acoustic signal that you're receiving at a microphone or a measurement device and tuning that to a target curve. So reason number two that you should get a digital signal processor is it allows you to control equalization on every channel. The reason that I stress every channel is a lot of times people will get confused and they think because they installed an aftermarket head unit that has an equalizer, they think that that gives them full DSP control. But that is not the case because you're only tuning that equalizer for the system as a whole. You're not tuning every individual channel like you are with a digital signal processor. Reason number three to get a DSP is you can control crossovers for each of those channels as well. This allows you to do things like running active where you might have dedicated amplifier channels for tweeters and mid-range speakers. And it also allows you to have different crossover set points from left to right. Again, you could have an individual one for every single channel of output on your digital signal processor. When it comes to setting crossovers on things like an aftermarket head unit or on something like an amplifier, a lot of times you're limited to doing that to pairs of channels. Reason number four to get a DSP, and you're starting to see a trend here, and that's because we can control time alignment independently to every channel on the DSP. Time alignment or time delay allows us to delay the signal that is going to a certain speaker. The reason this is advantageous is Oftentimes in a vehicle, we're not sitting dead center between the different speakers in our listening position. They actually have different distances to our listening spot. Because our driver's side speaker is closer to us than the passenger side speaker, it's advantageous for us to delay that signal so that that signal arrives at our listening position at the same time as the further speaker. Now there are times that a factory audio system might already have some signal delay applied for a certain location but keep in mind that with that factory system, we can't ever modify any of those values. So by having an aftermarket DSP, like I said, we can fine tune our time alignment for each location. That way, if we're using a slightly different location or if we just wanna modify it in order to achieve a better tune, we are able to do so. Reason number five to get a digital signal processor is we are able to provide tuning capabilities to multiple amplifiers. Aftermarket DSPs often give us six, eight, even 10 channels or more to work with for our system. So that allows us to achieve a very complex system where we might have multiple 
multiple four channel amplifiers, multiple subwoofer amplifiers, we're able to control all of those different channels. Finally, reason number six, and I should note that there's a lot more reasons to get a DSP. These are just the six main ones that I'm listing in this video. But reason number six is the ability to have multiple preset tunes on a digital signal processor. So earlier in the video, when I was talking about time alignment and that ability to control the time delay when you're sitting in the driver's seat position, some of you might've been thinking, well, yeah, but won't that mess things up for the passenger side of the vehicle? The answer to that is yes. Oftentimes when we're tuning for the driver's seat of a vehicle, we'll call that a one seat tune. And if we're tuning for both the driver's seat and passenger seat in the vehicle, we would call that a two seat tune. What's great about an aftermarket DSP is we are able to have multiple different tunes on the device. We could have that one seat tune for when it's just us in the vehicle listening all by ourselves. And we could also have that separate two seat tune that takes advantage of some features like all pass filters and where you modify the time delay and equalization to have a better two seat sound stage. You could have that on a separate preset that you easily switch to when you have two people listening in the vehicle. And this idea of multiple presets could also be expanded upon. You could have a valet mode where you completely cut out all the bass. That way you know no one is ripping up your subwoofers. You could have an extra bass mode. You could have an SQ bass mode. You could have everyone in the vehicle mode where you activate a different tune for the rear speakers. There's a ton of different options that you could go with here. So with all that said, a digital signal processor is a pretty powerful tool when it comes to installing custom vehicle audio. But there are a few misconceptions, so there are some reasons that I would actually suggest that you don't get a DSP if these apply to you. Reason number one to not get a DSP is if you expect it to fix a poor quality install. A quick few examples, let's say that there's a mid-bass speaker but it's installed into a vehicle in a way that doesn't properly seal it to the door panel so you're getting a lot of cancellations. You can't expect a DSP to magically restore that sound and make it sound better. You're going to have issues still because there's an installation related problem. There's many different examples here. So if you can think of an installation related issue that really can't be solved with a DSP, let the community know down below. Reason number two that getting a DSP might not be the best choice for you is if the budget doesn't allow for it. A digital signal processor is an advanced technology packed device. So naturally they tend to be a little bit more expensive. If you're doing something on a limited budget and you want to add, let's say as an example, a subwoofer amplifier and a subwoofer, then trying to squeeze a DSP into that budget as well probably doesn't make the most sense. With that said though, I'm definitely a firm believer in the fact that having a digital signal processor should rank really highly on your list of things to add to your system. Deal breaker number three for a reason that getting a DSP might not be the right solution for you is if you expect it to completely tune the audio system and do everything on its own without your input. Personally, I see this one quite often. People want to buy a digital signal processor that they just hit a button and it completely tunes the system all on its own and then they're happy and good to go. There are devices out there that do have an auto tuning functionality, if you will, but what you have to remember is they are doing that functionality using a microphone. And while a microphone does a great job of tuning an audio system, at the end, what's most important is we need to actually listen with our own ears and make modifications. Also, to truly achieve the best performance with a digital signal processor, you're really going to need to have an understanding of how tuning a digital signal processor works. It's okay if DSPs have an automatic routine that allows you to save some time as you go through the tuning process, but you need to have the ability to be able to go back and make changes if need be. The software of the device shouldn't be locking you out from making changes or even seeing what the DSP actually did when it goes through one of those auto-tune routines. So question of the episode, now that we've talked about this, do you think that a digital signal processor is the right choice for you. Why or why not? I always love hearing from you guys and getting your feedback. If you are interested in seeing the DSP tuning process broke out step by step, definitely be sure to check out the related videos here on the channel. And if you are new here, I would love to have you as a subscriber. A special thanks to New Concepts for sponsoring this video. Next time you need power wire or wiring accessories, be sure to check them out. And a big thanks to Juan, Jerry, Steven, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And thank you for tuning in and watching.